joining me here in Studio A to talk about the 59th annual Connie Mack World Series, which begins later on this week here in Farmington. General Chairman Johnny Curry is here. Good morning, and thank you for coming in. Good morning. Thanks for having us. You bet. Good to have you here. Casey Snyder is also with us this morning, and she is in charge of the Foster Family Program. Good morning. Welcome Good back. Good morning. How are you? I'm well, thank you. Welcome back. Good to see you once again. And uh, Johnny Curry, here we go, right? But number 59. Number 59. How about that? Man, it, it, uh, it's been a while, hasn't it? It has been a while. 1965, it rolled into town and uh, hasn't left. Right. And uh, hopefully here to stay. Hopefully. What a tradition, right, for Farmington and right. uh, and the area. And it's an event that I think the whole town gets behind and got a lot of a lot of history for sure. And a lot of young men who've come through and uh, played in the games and gone on to really cool things, as we know, certainly from some of the other players that have been here. Oh, absolutely. Tons and tons of uh, uh, draft picks and, and MLB players through the years. Uh, you know, and, I, and I, you mentioned the the fact that it's here in the community, staying here in the community. I was on the mayor's table last week, and I talked about how how much this tournament has become just part of the culture of who San Juan County is. Right. I uh, agree with that. And it, it would be hard to even imagine uh, – the area without the tournament sure right very true but i don't think we should take it for granted either right because oh, there's a lot of work not. by a lot of people like yourselves the two of you that are here that makes it such a big part of san juan county and that's an important part and the aabc and the other folks that are involved with this right yeah, yeah from the aabc to all the committees over 200 volunteers uh man and i know we were kidding around before we got on air but i i as general chairman when I stepped into the position or last year as vice chairman with Mark Varley uh, and saw all the things that he did, I thought, man, I'm going to mess this thing up. And the best that I could do is just kind of stay out of the way and let people do their job. It's been amazing to watch. I've never, you know, I, I've been in a lot of uh, leadership roles in, in my career, but I've never been in an organiza organization like this where people just really take take control of what they're doing and they do it well and they do it with passion and it it really has all come together in spite of me <laughs> well i don't know about that maybe in addition to you as well but it's a well-oiled machine is what i would say and uh it's been going for 59 years so i guess the folks that are involved kind of know a little bit about what they're doing but look to you for maybe some leadership and some some direction as to maybe what to do this year you know i just i just answer the the simple questions if it's a hard question i send it to someone else i see okay yeah. well that's leadership there you are so there, <laughs> there it is but we're excited that it is starting up later on this week of course and again the dates uh pool play starts on the 26th along with the parade that we'll talk about in a, in a minute but that first few days the pool play bracket and then bracket play the 28th through august 3rd and so pool play kind of sets up the bracket, I guess, is how it works, right? Right, right. Each team will play three games, uh, kind of a, a warm-up, so to speak. Right. Uh, Get used to the right. area if you're not from the area, which a lot of the teams are not, of course. <clears throat> it also uh, kind of spreads the games out so we can play a bunch of games for the fans and they can go to the different locations and That's watch. Right. And then, of course, we come together at Rickens and start bracket play. Exactly. And of course, KSJE is excited to broadcast all the games from Ricketts Park uh, to the audience, to the area and beyond. We know we get a lot of fans from uh, teams that can't come to Farmington that can enjoy the games um, on the radio streaming, which is which is great. So it's a great partnership we have with the county. Well, you guys do a great job. You have a great crew, Kirk Carpenter and those guys, uh, very professional. We do, and it's not me, so that's why it's so professional. <laughs> so that's important. So we're glad to, glad to do it. And like I said, it's, it's a great thing to be able to do for the community. Let me turn to Casey Snyder for a minute because Foster Families is another big part of the Connie Mack World Series and another thing that I think Johnny Curry mentioned about what makes it such an integral part of the culture in San Juan County because – these, these boys come in and they're not put up in hotels necessarily. They are staying with families and, and develop those relationships, and some which last decades. I hear stories and see stories even to this day about families that, that have fond memories of the Connie Mack players that were here and stay in touch with those players. It's a big deal. Yeah, yes. Um, we have a couple families that have kept for over 25 years. One of them tells me every year that she's done. This is last year. This oh, is last year. Do it. And okay. she's hosting again this year. Sign so her up. That's Good for how you. it works. Um, you know, as we tell people, they get all scared of what to expect. Um, just know you're going to have a lot of fun. You're going to stay up way too late. There's going to be a lot of chaos. 
and you're gonna have new family members for the rest of your life. Um, we actually kept the Ina team in 21. Your family. Our family. Yeah. And one of my players just got drafted first round. So, I mean, that's pretty cool. Right. Um, Notice how she said that one of my players. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because well, that, that's yeah. really what happens. Like she said, they become part of your family for the rest of your life. That's right. That's very true. Yeah. And that's how you feel. Yeah. And how they feel towards you, I would think, too, right? Yes. So, very exciting. And this year, we have right now sitting at 81 families. Okay. We could always use more. Okay. And people always ask me, like, well, how many more do you need? It's not how it works. It's a puzzle. And once you start explaining how it works, then they kind of get it. But it's not a number. It's um, right now we have a team coming with maybe 22, maybe 21, maybe 20. So at that point, when I mean a puzzle, if they're coming with not 22 and we have them down for 22 and they're now coming with 20, our goal is to move a family off, put them somewhere else where they're better needed. Mm -hmm. So it's not a number. It's letting, like, I will be keeping four players this year. Some families would rather keep three. They'd rather keep two. So it's about maybe taking a little off some other families. Got it. Very good. And if folks are interested, they can reach out to you. We're putting up an email address on the screen. Is that the best way to, uh, to reach out? Yes. That Connie Mac families at live.com? Yes. That's what we're showing. Yes. I'm hoping it's right. Yep. Okay. That goes straight to our email. Um, we have a big group of us. There's five of us on the committee. Um, we all have our kind of special specialties, and email is not mine. So uh, um, Kristen is our email queen, and she is on it and checking Got and it. emailing right away. Okay. But you can always use more or even curious folks that maybe want to learn more about, about the program. Absolutely. And, uh, and I know um, while the teams are here, there's a lot of, I think, benefits, as you mentioned, just personal benefits for um, being a host family, but our foster family, pardon me, I keep using that, that term. Go ahead. No, and just to add on to what Casey was saying, you know, and you mentioned this earlier, keeping the tournament here, the, the foster family program really is the backbone, the, 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 the glue in the binder of the book that keeps the tournament going. Without that program, uh, we wouldn't be able to do it. And I don't, the teams wouldn't be able to do it either. Because, the cost would be. Yeah, can you imagine, right? you know, what are you Hotel talking rooms for Seven 20. rooms for 10 days? Yeah. It's, that's crazy. Who can afford that? Right. And so, uh, you know, they got it right. The committee got it right when, in 1975 when they started the foster family program. And uh, it, it really is vitally important to, right. to the sustainability of the tournament. Exactly. And I know, as Casey mentioned, you stay up way too late, but you have a great time and um, you're eating a lot of eating a lot of food and, and preparing a lot of food. There's, there's some benefits, I think. There's some discounts and other things that the committee is able to do for these foster families. And so that helps to kind of uh, help them to be able to offer their, their homes for these boys. Yes. Yeah, so the committee does give each um, family a certain amount of money, depending on how many players you keep in the house, which that's been new for, I think, the, this is the third year, which is very very helpful yeah um the com community really steps up with discounts in town with buy one get one free i mean the community does a great job um with giving discounts to players and um you know it, it's not the fact that the community is not stepping up to host because they are like they we truly are it's we are now a, a a tournament with 12 teams in it that we have to host 11 of them their rosters can be 24. So when people say people aren't doing their job, they are. It's just the, the tournament's much bigger than it was five years ago, right. 10 years ago. So when people think that, you know, we're dire need, we're not. People are doing their job. It's just it's 244 players or something crazy like that. So it's actually, I think, more than that, to be honest. But right. So just something to think of. Sure, of course. It's too early to do the math, but yeah. we get what you're saying. Yes. There's a yes. lot of lot of young men who need uh, places to stay. And again, as, as Johnny Curry said, it, it keeps the tournament affordable for these teams to be able to come here and uh, and play and uh, and maybe win. You never you never know. So it's a great uh, opportunity. So once again, I want to repeat that that email address. If you're interested, you can reach out to Connie Mac Families at Live dot com. Probably this Facebook group is, or page as well that they could message you through, I think? Yes, we have a Facebook page. Um, I mean, so if you look around, our phone numbers are around. I mean, pe a lot of people can figure out a way to get a hold of us. Okay, good. And that's important. So that that's great. And I would think, too, because you have kids in your household, and that has to be a really cool thing when you're sharing your house with a baseball player in the Connie Mac World Series for your kids to be able to kind of hang out and rub shoulders with these uh, these pretty good athletes. I think it's their favorite time of the year. And I think many people would say that. Right. I know many families that say, 
even like this year, they're like, we really want to keep, but we're going to be out of town and my kids are furious. So I, I know people that actually were supposed to be at a family reunion. They have a returner. So guess what? They're not going to the family reunion. Wow. So, I mean, it's, it's the relationships and how close you can get to someone between, you know, six to 10 days. It's pretty, it's pretty amazing. Definitely. Definitely. Well, it's a great program. Again, it's one of the things that makes the Connie Mac World Series, I think, unique among tournaments like this. I don't know of many others that, that do this, but again, as we said, it's a big part of this tournament and uh, makes it special and creates some really special memories every year when these, uh, when these teams come in. So great, great job to be able to offer this to, the, to those teams. Um, Johnny Curry, I want to ask you about the teams that are coming. I yeah. think they've all been decided yeah, we at, we at this point, right? We have the host team, of course. We should start with them um, mm -hmm. because that was an exciting uh, city tournament just uh, did, a couple did weeks ago. Did you watch the... You know, this, I heard it on the radio. Yeah. <laughs> the Farms and Scorpions, they had a great tournament, man, mm -hmm. and they were they were kind of favored going into that championship game, but Frackers just, they they did what they do. Right. And uh, they had a great game and pulled it out, and, of course, they were invited as the host team. The Frackers, that's right, and forced um, the if game because that doesn't always happen too, but right. this year we had an if game for the championship game, so, yeah. Right, so it was, it was, an, it was a fun tournament. Yeah, very much so. Um, then we have, uh, and I'm going to go backwards in the order that they entered the uh, sure. or qualified. Okay. So South Plains qualified Tulsa Sandlot out of Tulsa, Oklahoma. That's a team we've heard before, I think, right? Mm -hmm. SoCal Renegades. Yeah. Um, made it via qualifying. Uh, Doolin's Dodge Dodgers are returning as right. well. North Texas Longhorns out of Dallas. Um, Dallas Patriots out of Dallas. We have a Canadian team, Misagua. Ontario. Okay. Uh, so that'll be fun. They're back. They were here last year, as I recall. Or no, at least. Were they? Yep. Okay. All right. Uh, man, I'm going to mess this. So I'm just going to say Lafayette, Louisiana. Okay. Can you say that? Do you know how to say that? Okay. We're not, we're not going to say the name of the team. Okay. All right. uh, 12 baseball. I'm going to have to know that by the parade, though, uh, yeah. because I'm going to have to say that. I'll, but let, yeah. I'll let you figure that out. Okay, thanks. The Cajuns. Uh, the, yeah, the Cajuns. There you go. Dallas Tigers, uh, of course, Midland Redskins, automatic bid. Right. Well, Dallas won it last year, so they're defending champions. That's right. Uh, and then United Baseball from Dallas. Okay. So that, that rounds out the 12. Wow. Exciting. And uh, and they've all gone through those tournaments to uh, to be able to get here, right? At least most of them. Yeah, all but three. Right. So the two There's automatic, automatic bids and then the uh, defending champs, and then the rest had to go. They had to win tournaments like you said to get here qualifying tournaments through the abc tournament schedule right and um they uh, uh sometimes 40 80 teams in a tournament wow and they have to go through the well, tournament and win it's a big deal to get to the World Series, oh, yeah, right? Is. That's why it's the Absolutely. World Series. So that's mm -hmm. very true. Um, tickets for folks who are looking to get tickets to the uh, to the World Series. You know, there's there's probably just uh, man, just a handful, literally a handful of uh, reserve seating mm -hmm. tickets available. But there is general admission tickets available, and you can get those through the website cmws.org. Okay. Very good. Um, it says ticket booth open here too as well, right? To be able to go and, and check them out. So right down at the rec center here in Farmington. Right. So that's another way to do it. The parade. Um, let's talk about that for a minute. That is happening. Gosh, this Friday mm -hmm. already at I ten o'clock in the morning. Right. Uh, lineups at nine, and parade starts at ten. Okay. And, and it goes uh, west to east. Right. Yeah, and no more big trucks like you've seen in the past with players riding the big trucks because of the. The roundabouts. The roundabouts. Right. So they walk. And we've had players mention that, that they, they like that better. They can interact more with the, oh, yeah. with the crowds and things. Go right up right? to the kids. Right. Yeah. Very so. cool. Well, that's exciting and a big part of it. And, again, I think that the teams all have sponsors that, that mm -hmm. help put together whatever float they're going to have in the in the parade, even if it's a shorter mm -hmm. um, vehicle. And and that's all, again, part of what makes the Connie Mac World Series so special, right? I mean, I don't know how many tournaments do that, but when the team shows up and the next day they get a parade in their honor. Yeah, I think none tournaments <laughs> yeah. have a parade. Just this one. Pretty much. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no tournament, I think, in the country has a foster family program. Uh, you're, you're right. It really is a unique tournament. Right. Very much so. And and the whole um, arriving into town, I think the police escorts mm -hmm. and the whole other hoopla that they get when they arrive, still at the Civic Center, if, yep. I, if I recall the correctly, 25th, to, to right. be welcomed. And, I mean, that's all part of it, it too, right, to, to treat these 
these players like the champions that they are for getting here. Oh yeah, a lot of a lot of uh, uh, excitement, especially on the 25th when they roll into town, and fans are welcome to come out to the Civic Center and and meet the players and the coaches and. That's where the players, uh, we sit down with the players and we give them a, an orientation, uh, you know, the expectations, the do's and the don'ts, and then that's where they get their foster families as well. Right. And I think I just want to, I want, I not think that I want to, I do want to ask you about the cooperation with all the other entities that make these things possible, the sponsors for the parades and things and, and, and putting together these floats, the law enforcement agencies that do the escorts coming into town, the city with the Parks and Rec Department that keeps the park, I mean, Ricketts Park is premier among these these baseball parks um, throughout the country. I mean, just, just all these relationships that the committee has that make this possible. Well, and like, like I mentioned before, it's so much part of the community that, uh, and the community, the entire community really is involved in, in some aspect. And then of course, uh, you know, the, the government agencies, like you mentioned, fire department will be there throughout the tournament police department throughout the tournament. Um, of course, Parks and Rec, city, uh, the city of Farmington do a great job with the parks and uh, with the facilities. And you're right, it, it's, it, it does really, it takes everyone, but everyone um, ha seems to have a passion for it. Definitely. Well, and they, I think they all agree that it's a big part of the community and a big, um, so an event that, that kind of defines Farmington and, and San Juan County, especially in July and August. At, it's not yeah. summer, but it's not Connie Mac, right? Well, and that kind of sig when Connie Mac is over, kind of signals the end of of summer, right? For most people, go back to school and whatever. Exactly. And, uh, so it, uh, man, it it really is. Uh, I, I can't say it enough how much a part of the community it is. Right. Very true. And and, and again, d due to the work of a lot of folks like yourself, and the other committee members and the volunteers, there's a whole army small army of volunteers that and I think you can always use more more help too can't you oh absolutely uh, you know I mentioned over 200 volunteers but like Casey said with the foster families we're always always looking for more uh, any kind of help is welcome uh, just email us through the website get in contact if, with us if you want to if you want to uh, help in any, any way I do need to mention though um, you know a lot of when we talk about the Connie Mac World Series uh, this this group kind of gets left out uh, uh, in the discussion a lot of times because they're kind of the behind the scenes, but really this group is the foundation of the of the tournament and that's the AABC right. organization. Um, with, without the AABC, there one there wouldn't be a tournament, and two the tournament wouldn't be here. So just really appreciate the the AABC and what they are doing and what they've done for the tournament. Very good because they've been involved for. Ever, ever, right, mm -hmm. and uh, and so it's an important important part of this as as well. So as we get ready for the first uh, the first pitch and opening ceremonies and things like that, I mean, all this is all part of it. I know there's been a Hall of Fame um, to mm -hmm. try to again identify um, former players and, and some mm -hmm. of the things that they've done in their in their career. So all these things have kind of been added to the Connie Mac World Series over the over the years, which is a great thing to make it even more special. We have three um, Hall of Fame inductees. This year? This year. Right. Uh, three that we're going to induct into the Hall of Fame. One will be uh, at the tournament, and in fact, he's going to be our parade marshal. Nice. Okay. Very exciting. Well, we're looking forward to it, and it's it's going to be great. Um, Casey Snyder, I want to come back to you a little bit because I know um, your husband was the ch general chairman a couple, a couple of years ago, and so you got to deal with that from in the family standpoint, but it's a big job, isn't it? I think Johnny's um, saying that he's not – busy but i know he's busy um and letting everyone else do the do the work but i think the general chairman does have some stuff to do uh, would it's, you agree it's it's a huge job yeah and at that time our kids were a lot younger it was it was a lot um and he changed a lot of things of the tournament which um is pretty neat to say um the renovations part of it that's right um and the ticketing which threw everyone for a loop when it got, when all went digital but i feel to this point it's been so great and so much easier, I feel, on the committee. But, um, yeah, I'm kind of glad he's not the chairman. <laughs> <laughs> right. But I think Johnny's being modest when he says yes. he's not, not Johnny does a, a great lot. job. So uh, I just wanted to put that out put that out there. And remind folks again about the parade. Uh, if you can't make it downtown on Friday, KSJE will be uh, streaming, live streaming the video of the parade on our Facebook page um, live as it happens. So you can join us for that. 
or for the teams that are from out of town and they have uh, folks that want to watch, they can do that from, from out of town as well. So it's a, it's a great uh, part of our partnership with the ABC and the County Mac World Series to be able to do some of these things. And speaking of watching, uh, yes, the games at Rickett Park, Ricketts Park will be streamed, all the games, and with the, the uh, championship game being broadcasted by CBS Sports. Nice. Yeah. Nice. I know that adds a lot of extra stuff to, to some of the jobs, right, to be able to coordinate that, but, uh, but that's very good. And it's on the radio, too. She mentioned that. Or else it's I'll get on fired. the radio, too. I'll get fired if we don't. So, <laughs> good. Very good. Well, thank you both for coming in this morning to talk with me about the, uh, the Connie Mack World Series, number 59. And I know you're already thinking about oh, yeah. number 60 for next year. Already. Right? Yeah. So, okay. Can't wait. Can't divulge anything right now. No, I understand. Super I understand. secret top secret stuff. But when you're ready, you come back here, right? Oh, yeah. Okay. We will. Sounds good. Very good. Thank you both very much. Have a great series. Thank you. Thanks. You bet. My guest this morning talking about the Connie Mac World Series right here on KSJE. Good job.